Okay, thank you everyone. I'm Cole Harrison with Massachusetts Peace Action. I want to welcome you to our afternoon session. We are talking this after, could everyone please be silent? We are talking this afternoon about how to mobilize to reduce the dangers of nuclear war. Peace Action is a 60 year old organization. We were formed to ban the bomb in the 50s as the Committee for a Sane Nuclear Policy. We're now Peace Action. We continue our work for nuclear disarmament as well as against U.S. wars and occupation and to move the military budget to meet the needs of our people. We have three great panelists today with different aspects of mobilizing and I'm going to introduce each one uh, before their remarks. Jonathan King, who was the initiator behind the program uh, chair for, t for today's conference and the initiator, he's professor of molecular biology at MIT, the author of over 250 scientific papers, and a specialist in protein folding. <coughs> he was a leader in the mobilization of biomedical scientists to renounce the military use of biotechnology and to strengthen the Biological Weapons Convention. He was a founder of the Jobs with Peace campaign in the 1980s, and he is now chair of the Nuclear Disarmament Working Group of Massachusetts Peace Action. He is also an officer of the Cambridge Residence Alliance and of the Citizens for Public Schools. Jonathan King. Thank you, Cole. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Can you hear me? Is this working? Uh, I, I got, yeah, okay. So uh, up there on the, in front of you, uh, probably the clearest expression of our national priorities is the distribution of spending in the annual congressional budget. So this is the money that Congress votes on each, each year to run the country. The pie chart is produced by the National Priorities Project out in uh, Western Massachusetts and shows how this money was allocated in 2015. As you see, the single largest ca category is Pentagon spending more than half of all the money the government uh, spent that year and the year before that, the year before that, and the, the current year. And these expenditures are larger than all other federal civilian programs put together. Uh, transportation, food and agriculture, basic scientific research, housing and, and community. Uh, it's not only that those uh, those portions of the budget uh, haven't grown, it's they've been actively shrunk over the last d decade. And among the uh, components that have been shrunk are the ones that uh, take care of the most vulnerable members of our population, cuts in the WIC program for food assistance for women's infants and children, training and placement for the unemployed, funds for affordable housing, uh, Title I grants to disadvantaged schools, Pell grants for low-income students. All the things that people really need have been cut. Uh, and uh, the damage, um, this is real damage that's done to tens of millions uh, of people. This is just re-graphing it. Not everybody is comfortable looking at pie, pie charts. So there's a bar chart uh, on the left, uh, the military and on the right, um, other things. Look at the one uh, next to the right, because I'm going to come back to that. That's public uh, tra tra transportation. Now, um, the major component of all this money is individual income taxes. Uh, how many of your friends and neighbors know that half of their income taxes go every year, more than half, to the Pentagon? How many of, of you know that half of your income taxes go every year? Very, very few people know that, right? It's taken out as withholding. City of Cambridge does a great job sending out uh, a brochure every year that explains how the property taxes are being spent. Nobody tells you how your income taxes are being spent. Now, that's one thing that's obscured. The other thing that's obscured is the actual split in this budget. In November and December, this budget was moving slowly through Congress because the Republicans, even they could, even though it was a backwards budget, couldn't agree on passing it. New York Times had 10 or 15 articles, front page articles, about whether the budget was going to be passed or not. Boston Globe had a dozen articles. Not a single one of those articles mentioned that of all that money, more than half was going to the Pentagon. Nor did they ever mention that it was your income taxes. Many of my neighbors believe that the Pentagon budget comes from out there somewhere. 
Right, right. They, and they wouldn't believe it if I said, no, it comes from, it comes from you, right? right? So that's part of the kind of right-wing right plans here <laughs> is to make sure you don't know, uh, you know these essential aspects of it. Now, um, the, the cuts cause social mobilization. The cutbacks in pub public housing all across the country uh, people are in distress because they can't stay in the houses, they can't get Section 8 vouchers. All my colleagues whose, bio, whose research programs, really good research programs are being cut, that graduate students can't continue doing research, can't get jobs there in the state. And um, people who have to get to work or get to school, get to the hospital by, uh, uh, on public transit uh, have been very upset. Now, um, Though uh, I need not point out to you, the Republicans are very, very good at saying they're against big government. They're against big government when it's for anything we need. When it comes to nuclear weapons, they are all for big government. Giant programs, F-35, upgrade the, the uh, Trident submarines, et cetera. So that thing of being against big government is very, sel very selective. The last myth that's promulgated and this we run into continuously often with our friends, is the notion that those two parts of the budget are separate pots, right? The military budget is separate from the political budget. That is false. There's a single federal budget, and in any, any year the Congress can vote to cut the housing and put the money for Trident submarines, or they could vote to cut the Trident submarines, which would free up money for, for, for housing. So don't let anybody tell you, Congressman Capuano puts that out all the time. Oh, we have a separate budget, we can't, uh, we can't move back and forth. You don't move back and forth, you cut one and put the money freed up in, in the other. So that's an important thing to keep in mind. Now, in peace action has been around for, for quite a while. I have a lot of experience trying to talk about nuclear weapons. And um, in, in recent years, uh, we've become part of something called the Budget for All campaign, uh, which talks about the state budget dependence on the, fe on the federal bu budget. And um, that coalition has in it many groups that have many, many members. The Massachusetts Association of HUD Tenants, the service employee un unions, uh, teachers, uh, social service groups. Th thousands of people who depend on the budget. One of the things we've discovered, for example, there were lots and lots of people waiting at tea stations when the snow stopped the tea running. They're just standing around, right? But if you went up to them and say, you know, we have this terrible situation with the proposed trillion dollar modernization of our nuclear weapons and it's gonna decrease our national security, it just didn't quite get their attention. But if you went up to them and say, you know, we could solve this problem if we could buy 100 new red line cars. You could open the conversation, and then you get back, well, but that would cost millions, of dollars, cost millions of dollars. Then you can say, well, look, you know, we're spending billions on the nuclear submarines. How about we just build subways rather than submarines? So our Budget for All campaign developed uh, a kind of outreach to these stranded transit riders, which we call subways, not submarines or build passenger trains, not nuclear submarines. Uh, and there's a flyer uh, that was given out at, at stations which uses this people's budget as the way of talking about the budget. Now, I don't have to remind you, you've heard and you'll hear more later on how expensive these nuclear submarines are. Right, we already have 14. If one of them fires off their missiles, obliterates the major cities of any country on, on Earth, uh, we don't need 14 of them. Meanwhile, the government is proposing to build eight more, $100 billion, enormously expensive. Um, the, this is Congressional Budget of, Office uh, estimate, very conservative estimate, $348 billion um, over the next 10 years to upgrade the, the for the nuclear modernization. Um, we're not talking here, but we will at next year's conference, that one of the key drivers is not fear of the Soviets. It's that enormous profits are made on these contracts. They're monopoly contracts because you can't outsource to the Chinese. They're cost plus, company gets paid, no, uh, gets a profit no matter how inefficiently they manufacture the missiles. And there's no auditing 
You can't examine what's going on because secrecy, because national security puts a blanket that prevents audit, so there's no auditing. Now, what we're talking about is very realistic. Uh, Boston sent last year to the Pentagon in income taxes, Boston residents, about a billion dollars. It's a thousand million. If you just cut, cut that 25% and put 40% of that money into transit, Massachusetts would get back enough to buy 50 new red line cars. So this is very, was very co concrete. Cut back, build a few less submarines, we can get 100 new red line cars. Now I want to close with the form we're taking uh, this effort, which is the this People's Budget Campaign. Um, buying these weapons, it's a con congressional authorization appropriation. House of Representatives is the, is the lead, right? That's the political target. Cut the budget. Not the Pentagon, citizens have no control over the Pentagon, but our elected representatives have some control over. There is already in the Congress, in the House of Representatives, a progressive caucus, 75 members, and the progressive caucus writes an alternative budget, which is now called the People's Budget, and the People's Budget does actually cut some military spending, and given the letters they're all gonna get from you next year, right, they're gonna cut a little more. Maybe they'll cut the nuclear modernization, freeing up much more money on the, uh, on the, on the uh, human side. So that allows us to work together with the Coalition for Basic Human Needs, the National Alliance of HUD Tenants, American Federations of Teachers, because um, we, say, we can say to them, you want more money for health, education, welfare, join us in cutting the, the nuclear weapons uh, budget. We don't have it now. We used to have it years ago, but we needed to have it again. Leaflets that make very clear to people that it's their tax dollars and where their tax dollars go. And very clear what the trade-off is. You want houses or do you want more Trident uh, missiles and make that very clear too. Um, that's a campaign that's begun. Strange as it may seem, the peace movement is playing a key national role because all the other groups had historically fought against each other. The housing people don't care about biomedical, no, I would say don't care about biomedical research. But they, don't, they end up competing against each other. Now in the people's budget, they come together and we say join us in cutting the military side and you can get what, what you need. So looking forward to working with you together uh, in the future. Thank you for being here.